now, this is our 12 volt power source. Similar to what your car uses. No, it's exactly what your car uses. We're also gonna hook up a little battery charger to it so we don't drain it while we're playing around with our electrolysis process. And there's that little battery charger there. So we're gonna hook up our little battery charger. And this keeps our battery charged. Now we're gonna hook up our electrolysis machine. Same way. Oops, not, not that way. Want positive to positive, negative to negative. Now, as you can see on the gauges here now, we have voltage. As you notice on the amp gauge, no amperage. And we're in our solution. Nothing's happening. Why? Because we don't have our electrolyte inside. Remember, electrolyte is just a chemical that introduced into an aqueous solution, otherwise water makes current flow. So now, we have to make current flow. Okay, now we're gonna add our lye to the solution. I'm gonna use this tiny little spoon because I don't wanna put too much. Remember, if you put too much, it's gonna draw too much current. You wanna build it up slowly, put in a little more, see what the amp gauge says. If you're not happy with it, put in a little more. What I like to do is get about 15 amps per canister for a total of 30 amps for both. I found out that that is the particular point where efficiency is equal to the amount of current used. If you use more current than that in these small units, you're just burning up current and you're not making that much more hydrogen. So that's what we're hoping for, to get 15 amps each and then 30 amps total. So now I'm gonna go ahead and add this stuff and you can see immediately the reaction happening. Now, just as a side note, you see the little bubbles coming up already? That's hydrogen, right there, those little bubbles. Now watch what happens when I add some lye to the solution. There's the lye flakes going to the bottom as they dissolve. Wow, look at that immediate reaction we get. It's gonna settle down a little as the solution mixes. And we're gonna look over here to our amp gauge and we're gonna see the change. Now I'm gonna put a little bit in the other one. Okay, we also see the reaction happening again. Now we're gonna take a look at our voltmeter and our amp meter and notice there is a change. The volts are gonna stay the same until we start draining the battery, but the amps are gonna come up. Now you see it? There we have current draw. Now I'm going to unhook one of these. So we have just one canister hooked up so we want to make sure we fine tune it to 15 amps. Then we'll hook up the other one, fine tune it to 15 amps. Then we'll bolt everything back together. So, well, it looks like we've got to add just a teeny weeny bit more to get it up to the 15 amps. So we've got to be real careful, just to add a little bit. So we'll hook up our battery again, put in a tiny bit of KOH, and we'll see that our current's going to come up even a little more. Slowly but surely it'll come up. So now that we have our current drawn, let's put these things together. Let's hook up a bubbler and let's see if we can make some hydrogen. But first let me explain to you what a bubbler is. It's one of these devices. Now the reason for this is strictly safety. What happens is the hydrogen is going to go in the bottom of the bubbler, bubble up through regular water, and then come up through the top. The reason for the bubbler is if there was a backfire, if anything was lit, the hydrogen would backburn into the electrolyzer and explode. We don't want that. That would be really bad. So what we're going to do is have a bubbler. Now you notice that the bubbler has a plastic top. There's a reason for that. If there's a backfire, the bubbler will blow its top, thus making the explosion there and not into our electrolyzer or hydrolyzer or electrolysis process. We don't want to blow up our tanks. But I did one better. Out of the tanks, we have a one-way valve from a welding machine. I wanted to make absolutely sure nothing goes bang that we don't want to go bang. All right, let's put this thing together. Just gonna screw them together just like you would 
a regular water filter. They seal up nice and tight. Real cool. There's one. There's the other one. And they are now closed. If you'll notice, we have a little gauge here. It's a pressure gauge. I don't know if we want it to pressure up or not, but if it does, we want to know. So now we're going to mount our little bubbler unit right here. It's going to come off of this tube. The feed comes out of our tanks into the bottom of the bubbler. Our feed from the top goes to our airflow meter. The airflow meter will tell us how much hydrogen we're actually making. That's important because it's amps times current, which gives us watts for you techies. And we want to know what that amount of energy will produce in a volume of hydrogen. This gauge reads liters per minute, not gallons, liters. So it's a little smaller measurement than you're used to. So we have it all hooked up. Let's plug the juice in and see what we're making. All right, look at all that hydrogen bubbling up. You can see what our current is. You see our voltage is. And here is our hydrogen bubbling up. Now you can see the liters per minute that we're making. From what I can tell from this side, because I'm not in front of it, it looks like we're making about a half a liter of hydrogen per minute. That's pretty good output for such a small machine. I know I could have used a pulse width modulator and I'm sure a couple of you guys out there are going, why not? Well, pulse width modulator is basically a motor control. All it did was limit the current. You limit the current, you limit your production. Some people think it's more efficient. I played with a few of them. I didn't see any advantage. I like to use what they call the brute force approach. Just slam a bunch of current in there and see what happens. A side note, in case some of you don't believe me, well, maybe he's just making oxygen. No, we're making hydrogen, and here's the proof. I'm going to light it for you. See that? That was a pop. There you go. That's hydrogen. So we are making hydrogen. This is no trick. This is real life stuff, kids. So next week, let's see if we can run something off of this hydrogen, whether it's a car, which is unlikely. A lawnmower, maybe. A leaf trimmer, more than likely. But you'll have to come back next week to watch us do this. We'll see you again on the shop. My name is Michael Rains. Oh, oh, you gotta be kidding. Do you know what this is? No idea. What the hell is this? It's only slightly larger. I have no idea what this stuff is. It's just me. We're gonna come back to it. Okay. Cut. Do it again. I don't know what it does or the reaction of any of this. But I'll tell you, the person who does know will be back here shortly. Okay, now let me explain to you what the electrolysis 